You've probably noticed that the quality of everything now, clothing, furniture, even airplanes, it's just not what it used to be. A lot of companies are skimping on quality, but keeping their prices the same or higher than ever. So today we are gonna talk about it, really just the problem with fast fashion and why it seems like now so many things are worse quality than they used to be. But first, I wanna thank our sponsor, which is a great alternative to fast fashion. If you're looking for some quality pieces, you should check out Quince. Quince is a website that has mainly clothing, but they also have jewelry, some home products, even suitcases that are made more sustainably and ethically. I have actually purchased stuff from Quince before, before I even got the sponsorship. So I was really excited about it. What I love about it is you can find really good quality stuff for actually a very good price because they are going straight from the manufacturer. They have quality fabrics like cashmere, silk, wool, things that are gonna be very expensive at a department store for prices that are much more attainable. I also feel that their clothing styles are very timeless. It's nothing too trendy. It, it's stuff that's gonna hold up for years and you're gonna wanna actually wear for years. I think it's a really great place to build a capsule wardrobe. But I'll show you some pieces that I got from Quince. My favorite being this trench. It's made from almost all organic cotton. I didn't have a trench and I think that they're very timeless, very in, very classy. and. And I love the beige color. So this dress is 100% silk. I think it would be great for layering, like putting a sweater over it. These pants are 100% European flax linen. I really like linen because I feel like it's more durable. It usually gets softer over time. And then I also got this linen blazer, which I really love because it's not too bulky. It doesn't have any shoulder padding. So it is a more like delicate look, I would say, that I love. Both of these pieces are from Quince. These are linen shorts. They're super comfy and breathable and a fun white top. I really like this white top. I think it's really versatile. I love this maxi dress for spring and summer. They do have different colors, but I love the brown. I recommend the brown. I really like it. And then this bodysuit is only about $30 and it's just the perfect bodysuit. And I just love how all these pieces really work as a capsule wardrobe. I can just mix and match with them. If you're looking to get some quality clothing pieces that are timeless and that are actually gonna hold up for a very long time, check Check out Quince. I know that quality pieces can get really expensive, but Quince is actually making it a lot more accessible. You can get really nice quality stuff that's actually made from linen or wool or cashmere at a way better price. I really love their stuff. So I'll have everything I showed here linked down below. Fast fashion has a couple main issues. One being the waste involved. A lot of stuff just ends up in a landfill. Actually 92 tons of textile fabric ends up in landfills every year. Have you guys ever been to a dump? Because I have and it really was like life-changing for me. I was there getting rid of some renovation scrap materials and I saw so much stuff in this dump that wasn't even garbage. It was pieces of furniture, like things that could have been saved or reused. People are just very quick to throw stuff away. Clothes, like things that could be recycled even. It was just very eye-opening to see. I used to be one of those people that thought, okay, as long as I'm donating the clothes I'm not using, it's fine, until I learned that most of the clothes that we donate do end up in landfills. This is where unwanted fast fashion goes. Clothing gets imported to Chile, where traders take what they want and dump what they don't. And really the key is just not over consuming from the beginning and also the ethics of it. We've known now for quite some time that even really big brands use sweatshops. It is horrible working conditions. It's actually, if we were to go see it in person, we would never buy that stuff. But we're so far removed that we don't have to think about it as much. We're not confronted with it unless you look online, but it's hard these days. It is difficult with social media. It has changed the game. Clothes are viewed differently now by some people. They're seen as single use items and the quality often is not as good. And I wanna start with that. The fact that clothing back in the day was better quality. If you've ever been to a vintage shop and found a piece from the 1950s, the amount of detail, it is not like a lot of the clothes that we have today. The trend cycle was a lot slower. People weren't buying as many clothing items. One thing I think is really interesting, if you Google 1920s fashion, you will see the style that encapsulates the whole decade. And same thing with the 30s. It's not even that different from the 20s. But if you think about encapsulating the 2010s, 
It would be a much bigger mood board, I would say. Back in the day, it's in the early 1900s, clothing was more about functionality. According to OceanGeneration.org, it really wasn't until the 1960s that fashion became a form of personal expression. It wasn't until the 90s that fast fashion really got going. Before that, a lot of clothing was made domestically. And in the 90s, we started manufacturing more stuff overseas, which is not inherently bad to make things overseas. There is the shipping aspect, but it was really more of a quantity thing. We could only make so much domestically, but overseas, they were able to just produce a lot more clothing items. One thing that I find is missing in the fast fashion conversation is the fact that clothing is a status symbol. And that's why it's so hard to not participate in the trends. It's not just a form of personal expression, but if you are on trend, if you have cool clothes, people think that you are cool. But you have to admit, when you have a cool, trendy outfit on, you feel different, you feel better, you feel more confident. And that is really why it's hard to not participate in these trends is because it actually does affect you socially. If you live in a place where appearances matter, like LA where I live, and you're wearing stuff that's completely out of style, like so five years ago, it's actually has an effect on the way that people view you as messed up as that is. I've experienced this where I've gone to an event and been like, oh, my outfit is not cool enough to be here. And it just makes me feel bad. But I've also experienced the flip side where I really plan my outfits out for a trip and I feel really good about them and people are like complimenting them. Like that's kind of what fuels it is the social part of it. If you were just at home all day, are you wearing a really trendy outfit? Probably not. But when you're going out, you're dressing to impress. And it's not always even to impress other people, but just to feel like you look good. It's almost an extension of pretty privilege. Even in the book Glossy, which is about people that worked at Glossier, this very trendy, cool makeup company, they kind of cite being stylish a little bit as a form of pretty privilege. They say you're allowed to be chubby if you dress well or something like that. I'll, I'll put the clip in here. Relatability online. You could be chubby if you had a gorgeous face and dressed well. Like they basically say that if you dress stylish, they'll forgive one other aspect of your appearance. So it's kind of like in our modern society, it's just a part of the social hierarchy to care about your clothing, you know? But social media has made it exponentially more important. Like it's not really important in the grand scheme of things, but it's made it seem more important. Think about back in the day before social media, the only people who saw your clothes were your friends, people at work, people at school, and it was only the people that you were with. So no one really knew if you were outfit repeating, but now with social media, there is this factor where people feel if you wore something on Instagram once, you kind of can't wear it again. Because even if the group that they're about to be with didn't see them wear it in person, they saw it on Instagram. And this was not something that they dealt with back in the day. You could go to 10 different weddings in a summer and wear the same dress. Whereas I was recently talking to this girl at an influencer event. She told me she had all these weddings this summer and she felt like she needed a different outfit for all of them. For the guys watching that don't realize this, that is very common now. Most women understand this pressure. Like you feel like you need to have a new outfit for bigger occasions and you're only wearing these things once. So it's so ridiculous. And I just want to throw in there from the influencer Influencer perspective. Influencers outfits are very unrealistic. Keep in mind, they're getting a ton of stuff for free. Fashion influencers really didn't used to be a thing. Like you were influenced by what you saw around you. I know fashion influencers and it's kind of fake. Like they will just plan a whole day to go take photos. They will buy stuff and then return it. Like just for the photos. It is not realistic and people don't realize that, but it's like they're taking suitcases of clothes on a trip that they got for free and then not wearing it again. Like that is not real life. You need to view it honestly as kind of like a magazine. Like it's cool inspiration, but don't feel like you need to do it. Don't feel like you need to have a new outfit every day or subscribe to all of these trends because it's like a full-time job for them to be able to like curate all of this. Like it truly is time consuming. So just keep that in mind. Let's talk a little bit more about the trend cycles because I feel like they really have changed a lot over the years. It used to be four seasons and a lot of companies would drop new clothing for each of these seasons. And I feel like they would generally stick to the same cut of things like denim, for example. The same cut of denim, like skinny jeans, were in for a very long time. Whereas now I feel like even the staple pieces like jeans have changed a lot even in the last few years. It was straight leg, boot cut, 
super baggy jeans are in, cropped with some distressing. Oh, now no distressing. Like, I swear it didn't used to be that intense with something like jeans. Like, it was more so, you know, different tops. Even the vice president of denim design at Madewell said this is the first time in her 30-year career she's seen so many denim trends at once. I really feel like in the past you could rewear the same pair of jeans year after year, but now it feels like even the staple items are, are trendy now, which is kind of weird. So like I said, there used to only be about four trend cycles a year. There wasn't even new stuff you wanted to buy that often. You would refresh your wardrobe a little bit for the season. Honestly, if you were like me growing up, it was once a year. It was back to school shopping and that was pretty much it. As I got older though and could afford my own stuff, I would buy a little more for different seasons or different occasions. But now with fast fashion, Shein has new clothing items every single day. Zara was one of the first places to pioneer this. They were one of the first to figure out how to make clothes really, really fast. And they're not even that cheap, but they were the first to just start pumping out different fashion trends. It seems like companies are coming up with random ideas to make you wanna buy more. This TikTok is a good example. Yeah, but things like this frustrate me so much. It's this. And people will say, oh, like go find what you want. It's obviously not for you. It's not a detail that changes the form of the dress. It's not adding sleeves or changing the length. It feels almost nonsensical. It's a detail that truly does not add, it only detracts. What does the cutout represent? First of all, it represents fast fashion to me. If you're not into the cutout trend in a couple years, this will no longer feel timeless to you. It makes it a summertime only dress, whereas otherwise you could wear darker accessories and sort of make it a transitional dress. It makes you have to buy more dresses because it's not filling as many needs. Like it's so true that cutout, you'll probably think it's cool a couple times. And then honestly, it might be kind of annoying because you can't wear like a normal strapless bra with that. I feel like I would never even wear it. And this one especially cracks me up. Fast fashion is so fucking funny because I bought these pants last year and I was like, I'm gonna be an it girl. Everyone's gonna wanna be me. New York City girlers are gonna have to watch out. Everyone's gonna be my friend. And it was literally these Shein pants. <laughs> like, who the f convinced, who convinced us? Who? But note how she said, I'm gonna be the it girl. Everyone's gonna wanna be me. Everyone's gonna wanna be my friend. It is deeper than just clothes. And we've all done this. We've all bought something that was really trendy that we thought was very cool in the moment. And then a few months later, we're like, why did I buy that? I've got a couple examples. Okay, I bought this bright pink top to wear to a bachelorette party. And it was pretty cheap, it was from Zara. It has shrunk so much. If you look at it up close, it really looks like it's just like falling apart. Like the quality is so bad. Bad. And also I really feel anything that's bold, a pattern, a color, you're just gonna get sick of it quicker. Like this one is definitely a regret. It's from Zara and the quality just, it sucks. Like look at it up close, you guys. It's a crop top now. It was not a crop top when I first bought it. And it just is like gross looking in a way. The fabric is just like coming up off of it. So that was one for me. I also bought this outfit for a bachelorette party and I bought it on Amazon. I never buy clothes on Amazon I, and I regret this one. A lot of times bachelorette parties now will have like a themed day and this was like a 90s theme. So I thought, and a pool party. So I thought, oh, this would be perfect. When in reality, I didn't need to buy anything for it. I could have just put some like butterfly clips in my hair and worn some colorful sunglasses. Like you, I don't need like this. It's not even that flattering looking. Like I look at the photos and I'm like, why did I know? Any bold color, I just get sick of it or pattern. It's just, no, it's, it's just a no. And even the colors will like go out of style quicker. Whereas black, white, beige, like it's never going out ever. I really think the mentality of Instagram saw it so I can't wear it again is so horrible. I outfit repeat. If you look at my Instagram, you can see I've worn this set so many times. I don't really care. That was a good quality piece and it was expensive and I wasn't about to just wear it once. Like, no. I'm not gonna say that the way clothes are manufactured doesn't matter at all, but I think the intention of clothing is so important. If your intention is to only wear something once, it doesn't matter how expensive it was. It could be a $2,000 coat. That is still wasteful. You could buy a relatively inexpensive top, but if you wear it like for years on end, it's better than buying like 15 things from Gucci every single day. It is important to buy quality pieces that aren't gonna fall apart, but I think I think we also need to remember that overall, we all probably need to consume a little bit less. Don't buy new clothes for every occasion. Like outfit repeat a little bit. Your wallet will thank you too. The earth will thank you. Your wallet will thank you. I will thank you. So a big reason that we can even have this wear it once mentality is because clothing is cheaper than ever. At least there is an option for clothing to be cheaper than ever. There are always gonna be more expensive options
options, but we've, I don't think ever had it before where you can get a dress for like $8. And the cheaper that things are, the more carelessly people will buy them because the stakes are lower. It doesn't matter. You can buy like three tops and one of them will work because they're only $5 each. More people are viewing it that way, which is very concerning because it's wasteful. The quantities that people are buying is just far more than what they need. And then it's a cycle. It tells these brands that, hey, people are buying more, they want more, and then they create even more stuff, even more styles. It's just like a vicious cycle, actually. If people were purchasing less, they wouldn't manufacture as much. But people wear a lot of stuff from places like Shein. Just look at some of the hauls on TikTok. So I did the thing off of Shein where you can send your link to a bunch of people and then they open it for you and then you get $300. Let's dump this bad boy. Really good quality. But here, this thing, it's just a short, little um, cover up to cover. And I got a navy blue top that looked cute, so. And I got a sweater, for looks like this, and it ties, it looks like. And I got another tube top. This one is a bonnet. I want You bought a whole new wardrobe, girl. And I know that it is a privilege to buy nicer quality items. Not everyone can afford to, like growing up, I couldn't. I would buy whatever was cheapest. I probably would have been shopping on Shein too. But those people are generally not really the problem because they're not over consuming. Like, like if you can barely afford to buy new clothes to the point where you're shopping somewhere extremely inexpensive, you're probably still not buying a ton of stuff. More so the issue is the people that can afford to buy nicer quality pieces, but instead buy a ton of cheap stuff to wear once. That is more where the problem lies. It is more so women than men. I feel like men don't buy clothes that often. They don't have the pressure to, like what they're wearing doesn't matter as much. Our culture and society kind of tells women like, fashion matters more. It is a societal thing. I think in some ways we're moving away from that because more and more people do want timeless pieces and are dressing in ways that are kind of universally going to look good, but we're not really totally there yet where it doesn't matter. Like for men, it still is kind of how it was back in like the 1800s where it's not as much a personal expression as it is for women. Like they can wear more basic stuff and it's fine. They can wear the same thing like to every wedding, it doesn't matter. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's actually kind of a good thing, but even for men, it has changed a bit. I've noticed, especially in LA, like guys do dress more trendy. They're, they care more about what they're wearing. And I'm sure like it is fun because it's fun to have a cool outfit. It's not great for the environment, guys. I know I've been mostly focusing on fast fashion, but the truth is everything is made cheaper now. Houses are quite often made with worse materials except for Onyx. If you caught my last video, they're making very sturdy houses. But a lot of new construction houses just built now, they're not made with quality materials. Especially, it's crazy. If you look at the attention to detail of Victorian era houses, or like some of these houses in San Francisco, craftsman style houses, like now it is more just what is the most profitable. And sometimes it's not the best quality. Look at that beautiful stucco work. Look at this beauty. They're still installing broken doors. The sad part is the builder will get away with this 99% of the time. And the carpet guy and stucco guy are probably the same guy. And same thing with furniture. Places like Wayfair and Amazon have made access to fast furniture very possible. And don't get me wrong, there actually is quality stuff on Wayfair. Like there actually are good pieces on Wayfair, but a lot of it is really cheap stuff that's not going to last you very long you'll notice like it's part it's not even solid wood it's particle board it's it's just bad it doesn't even look good and again i get that it is a luxury to buy nicer pieces and not everyone can and like when i was first you know moving out i could not afford to just buy really nice furniture like there's a time and a place to go to Ikea. Some stuff at Ikea is like decent quality though. But I think a lot of us can admit that, you know, you're, you'll get to a place where you have the money, but you still are tempted to cheap out. With things like furniture, it is better to just buy the quality piece. It also will have a better resale value if you don't want it at a certain point. Often you're better off buying a second hand like solid wood table than something made out of plastic or particle board. I think secondhand furniture is great. It's awesome. A lot of times that older stuff was made better quality, like desks now. Like I have a desk right here and it kind of broke. It's from West Elm 
and part of it broke when I was trying to move it and I could see the inside was particle board. I thought it was at least plywood with a veneer, but literally what? It's MDF. It's basically a particle board. It's like cheap materials that they smush together and then they slap something on it to make it look like wood. It's not real wood, it's like fake. So a lot of furniture is like that. Places like West Elm and CB2, like a lot of it is that. It's like particle board. And their stuff a lot of times is still not like that cheap. And even airplanes now we're seeing companies are cutting corners. Okay, not companies, Boeing. Boeing is cutting corners. I think Airbus is still doing things right, but they're just putting profit over everything, over safety even. There used to be more safety checks, but to save money and move faster, they eliminated some of those. And so the quality of the planes is not as good, which is very concerning because that's just like dangerous. I even saw a TikTok where someone in a Boeing factory interviewed other employees and he asked them like, oh, would you go on this plane? And they were basically all like, no way. Did you fly on one? Um, no. You won't fly on one. Did you fly on one of these planes? Of 15 workers asked randomly, 10 said they would not fly on the Dreamliner. Another thing that has contributed to the rise of fast fashion is the internet, online shopping. Back in the day, you had to go somewhere to buy clothes. You could see in person if the quality was good. You would usually try it on, see if it actually looks good on you or not. Whereas now we can do it from the comfort of our couch. And it's a lot easier too. You don't even have to put in your card info. You can just do the little Apple Pay thing. It's like too easy. In some ways, I think it can be good because then you do have access to places like Quince or other stores that have good quality clothing that you know you might not have in your town. Like when I lived in Seattle, the clothes were not the same. The town I grew up in, there was like a few places you could shop. So at least now you can access better quality clothing, you could research it more, you can like really see online what the things are made out of and look at reviews, but you can't try it on. But it's really just the ease of it, like the fact that you can order stuff so easily, of course it's gonna make people order more stuff than they need to. And then it's a hassle to return it, so you might just keep stuff and never wear it. Online shopping though, it can be a little bit of a savings because when these companies don't have to have a brick and mortar store or retail employees, like clothes do end up being a bit less expensive because they don't have as much overhead. So that is nice. But I think because you can't actually try stuff on, you end up buying more because whenever I go shopping and I actually try things on, it eliminates more than half the stuff I wanted because I realized it doesn't even look good on me. It looks good on the model online. That's the thing with online shopping is we have rose colored glasses. We're like, oh, I'm gonna look really good in this. When what you don't realize is the model has like a safety pin, pinning it back and that's the only way that they even look good in it. Some companies, are deceptive. They'll use like chip clips to make sure things actually look good. And you can see in the store, basically the barrier is just extremely low to buy clothes. And that's why people are buying more. And honestly, it's why the quality is worse. Companies see that there is a demand for cheap, bad quality clothing. Let's talk about some of the biggest offenders of fast fashion. Zara is one of the biggest. And a lot of people don't realize this because it's not even the cheapest. The clothing will still be like $50 or more for a top. But according to this article, they put out 450 million clothing items every day. I don't even know if I believe that. Like, how is that possible? 450 million a day? It just doesn't even make sense. Forever 21 obviously is a big one. Apparently a worker can put out 700 shirts a day. How is that even possible? There's no way one worker is making 700. The funny thing is Forever 21, like we don't even really see them very often anymore, but they were huge for a while. I remember back in the day going on their website and they would have new clothing styles every business day, every Monday through Friday, you go on their website, there was new stuff you could buy. Whereas most fashion brands that are making more quality stuff, they don't put out new stuff every day. They put out new stuff a lot less frequently. And then obviously Shein, which is way bigger than a lot of people realize because you might think you're buying something from some brand on Amazon, but it's from the same factory as as the Shein stuff. They have copied that business model of Zara and Forever 21 of just putting out tons of different styles. And I'm sorry, but a lot of them, I went on their website, the stuff is ugly. A lot of it is, I'm like, that doesn't, that's not even trendy now. Like that is ugly, no. And Shein is just the number one one that I hear of where people are like, oh, I'm just gonna wear it once. I just bought it for this one party. Nine times out of 10, better off thrifting something. We also need to talk about one of the myths of fast fashion, which is that 
it's only overseas. It's not. There are sweatshops in America. There are right here in LA. A lot of people think that if it's made in LA, then it's good quality. It is not. I actually interviewed this woman years ago who had a pure space rental, but in her past career, she was a clothing buyer and designer and she had visited different factories all over the world. And she told me the ones in LA are some of the worst working conditions. And ABC7 found that some garment workers are paid as little as $1.58 an hour. You might be like, how are they doing this? How is that even possible? It's because many of them are immigrants. They are able to exploit them because they've got something on them. But yeah, this was just in April of 2023. This was just last year that they found this and I'm sure it's been going on for decades. So just because it's made in the US does not mean that it was even made ethically. I do wanna note there, there are still quality options out there, but you really do have to be a savvy shopper because there's a lot of crap. Like you've gotta know the fibers and the fabrics you're looking for now more than ever. Okay, even places like Nordstrom now, they do sell a lot of polyester, a lot of like poor quality clothing. I went to what I now believe is the number one offender, Nordstrom again today. The price point of these clothes does not line up with the quality that you are getting. This is the dress on the Nordstrom website and I feel like they couldn't even make it look like it isn't. This dress is $400 and $95. The tag at the store said that it was 100% polyester. Those gold buttons were hanging on for dear life. That won't even make it out of Nordstrom. Of course they have nice stuff too, but, but some of it is very expensive and the quality is not that good. Like you really have to look out for it. One thing I try and stay away from is polyester, unless it's workout clothing. Apparently with workout clothing, it's good at wicking away moisture. It's like good for that. But a polyester sweater, it's just gonna pill, it looks bad really quick. Polyester, it's a synthetic material. Watch this TikTok of how it's made. It is basically plastic, but the way that it's spun and mixed with things, it, it won't feel like plastic always. Sometimes low key it does. It actually can be a pretty resilient material. That's why it's good for activewear. But since it's not an organic material, it's, it's oil. It's automatically worse for the environment. Like cotton is actually grown and like flax, what linen is made from. That is a natural fiber. It's grown from the earth. You're not, it's not emitting a bunch of CO2 the way that making polyester is. A lot of these cheaper clothing items from places like Shein will be 100% polyester and it's gonna pill, it's gonna shrink. It's gonna look really bad actually after a few washes. I like to look for more organic materials. You gotta watch out because they're sneaking cheaper materials in a lot of places. Some things though are gonna have a little bit of spandex or nylon or polyester. Like you can't, a linen bodysuit just wouldn't work. Like it would be too tight. It has no stretch, you know? So like certain things you do kind of need it. But I try and stay away from that for most items. So let's talk about how you can stop or you can really cut back on your fast fashion purchases. Number one thing I would say, just invest in nicer quality pieces that are timeless. Things that just aren't gonna go out of style, like a nice blazer, a nice cotton t-shirt. I love the capsule wardrobe movement. I've seen a lot of people also do this 333 method. You can see just how many outfits you can make out of three tops, three accessories, and three bottoms. It's a lot of outfits. You actually don't need tons and tons of clothes to make a cool outfit. Another thing is shopping your own closet before you go shopping. Really take stock of what you have. So often you'll realize you have a ton of tops, but you feel like you have nothing to wear because you actually don't have the right shoes for that outfit. And the issue is a lot of times we don't really realize that and so we just buy more tops we buy more things that we don't need really go through your closet and try stuff on and be like what am I actually missing like what staple piece am I really missing here like what do I keep buying that I need to stop and what staple piece am I am I missing that I might need to invest in a good quality one okay another thing obviously thrifting I have heard people say that thrifting is a privilege in itself because like just to have the time to go thrift. And I get that because thrifting takes a lot of time. It takes way more time to curate nice outfits from thrifting than just 
going on Shein or whatever. It's more time consuming and some people just frankly don't have that time. You can find some really good quality stuff secondhand. I would rather have a secondhand silk or wool top than a polyester sweater any day. And often it's all about the fit. You can buy secondhand and get it tailored with the savings from buying it secondhand. It's gonna look better than if you're just buying cheap stuff online. Looking into the fibers of things, of course, I think is big. Just making sure that you're buying quality stuff that's not gonna look worn out in a couple washes. Having the right intentions with clothes, like don't buy super trendy pieces that you're only gonna wear once. I have very consciously just decided to skip a lot of trends. And like I said before, the trend cycle so fast, it's really easy to skip. Like remember when these skirts were a trend? Like I feel like I never see people wearing them anymore. That was so quick. They had a moment. Not to say that they would be super not trendy anymore. Like if you own one and you like it, then wear it. But all I'm saying is I really wanted one of these skirts, but I skipped this trend and I'm glad I did because now I don't care at all. There's so many trends you don't need to participate in all of them. I would also say like just buy neutral clothing pieces like beige, brown, black, white. You're never gonna get sick of them. Like I could wear neutral pieces for the rest of my life. I'll never get sick of them, but I kind of end up regretting when I buy really bold patterns or really bold colors. Like I just get sick of it. And also maybe just consider curating your social media feed. The more that you follow fashion influencers and go on Pinterest, like it will make you want to buy more stuff. It really will. Just stop following as much of the the trendy fashion influencers. I feel like a lot of Gen Z fashion influencers are just go crazy with the trends. Whereas the older you get, the more you're like, I just want basic stuff. I just want a timeless look. I just want to dress like this. This stuff is a lot more timeless than this. So maybe shift who you're getting inspo from because there are a lot of fashion influencers that are very helpful in showing you how to thrift better, how to create a capsule wardrobe, how to find quality pieces. And then there are some who are just like carelessly buying so much stuff. Okay, that is my TED talk on fast fashion and some actionable ways you can, you know, cut back, maybe consume a little bit less. Okay, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Comment down below if you guys have other ways that you are able to avoid buying into fast fashion. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!